Okay, so you mentioned about the um, being fired from uh, Dio's band. Uh, you mentioned you you didn't leave. You were fired. So how did that go down? Well, when the band was first formed, um, Ronnie told Vinny and Jimmy and myself that um, for the first three records, if we were willing to to not be participants in the album sales or the tour receipts or the merchandise money or any of that, if we were willing to work for uh, a very modest wage, that by the third album, um, he would make it a, an equity situation okay. and we would get part of the record and part of the tours, et cetera, et cetera. So we worked for, um, for less than the road crew. I mean, we, we did, uh, the Holy Diver album, we got paid a hundred dollars a week. When we started the Holy Diver tour, we, our pay was bumped up to $400 a week. Um, and, and so on over the years, over the, the Holy Diver tour and the last line tour and the Sacred Heart tour. And, and our, our wages were gradually increased from, from tour to tour, but we were getting paid less than, uh, our lighting designer, for example, and things like that. And, and, but we were also, writing the songs with Ronnie. We were part of the creative process, but we got no, um, none of the record sales. Okay. Uh, we got none of the, uh, the merchandise money and none of the concert money. So we were, we, we, we were okay with that because Ronnie had promised us that by the third album, that would all change. We were working towards this goal and the band was becoming more and more successful. And uh, when the third album came along, I was the first one to say to Ronnie, to remind him of, of the promise that he made us um, back in, in 1982 when the band was formed before we, we did the Holy Diver record. And uh, I brought it up to Ronnie when we were recording the third album, Sacred Heart. And Ronnie said, let's get through the record first and then we'll discuss it. So I waited until the record was done and then I brought it up again. And Ronnie said, well, let's you know, get on the road and, and get rehearsed. And once the tour starts, we can discuss it with Wendy. Uh, Wendy was his ex-wife and, and manager of the band, his manager. And, um, I, you know, with benefit of hindsight, I, I see it very clearly now. It, it really came down to this. Um, there were only four people in the room when Ronnie made that promise, and that was Ronnie and Jimmy and Vinny and myself. Wendy Dio wasn't in the room, and Ronnie really never stood up to his ex-wife, um, and he never had the courage to tell her, that he had made this promise to us and she never saw the value in the original band. She was only, um, she was, uh, I think so creatively short sighted that she could only see that it was Ronnie. She didn't see value in who played on stage with Ronnie or, or who wrote songs with Ronnie. She just thought that everyone could be replaced. Whereas I think Ronnie really realized, the, the chemistry that the original band had and he really valued that but when it came down to it he, he didn't have the courage to stand up to Wendy and, and he figured that it was easier to, to just get rid of me and that's what he did so um, it was, you know, people can say it's about money and yes in, in, in black and white terms it is about money but, but more importantly to me is that it was about principle um, I believe strongly in principle, I always have I believe in integrity in people. And I, when I look someone in the eye and I shake their hand and I make a deal with them, I, I will uphold my end of the deal and I expect the same of other people. And, and Ronnie didn't do that for me. So um, that's why it, I was fired from the band and it left such a, such a bad taste in my mouth for so, so many years. I was so hurt by the whole process um, that after that, you know, I did make the mistake of saying, uh, very hurtful things about Ronnie in the press, as indeed he said the same about me. Uh, I think that was a mistake for both of us to do that. But um, it, it was a very painful thing for me because I, I never wanted to leave that band. I was fully invested in it. I enjoyed it uh, immensely. I believed in it and I, I give blood, sweat and tears and, and everything I had creatively over the course of three albums to to build that band and, and then to be unceremoniously dumped like that w was very, very painful for me. Um, so it, it took me a long time to come full circle. And I actually, to be honest, I think it also took uh, Ronnie's passing for me to be able to look at that in a different light. And, um, you know, 
realized that that it was as much Jimmy Bain's heritage and Vinnie Appice's heritage and my heritage as it was Ronnie's, and and we all own those records uh, and and that history. And um, so now I've I've come to fully embrace it. Whereas for many many years it was too painful for me to even listen to it. If it came on the radio, I would turn the radio off. I didn't own any of the records. I wanted nothing to do with it. Um, and now I see it in an entirely different light. I, I realize that, um, that that we own it as much as Ronnie, and uh, that it, it's it's a joyous thing to embrace. And it's it's it, it makes me incredibly happy to be on stage with with Vinny and with Jimmy while he was alive, and to play that to play that music again. You know, um, it's something I'm very 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 proud of. But but it took me a long time to get here, uh, and that's the reason why. Thanks for watching, and if you want more music news, just subscribe to Ultimate Guitar TV and press that little bell to get notifications.